SPTV. I'm very uh, happy to be out again with uh, Sir Councilman Bob Weiner. Um, we're here at Brandywine Creek State Park today, and there is all types of history that we're going to learn about. I'm excited to have our, our councilman educate us on what he's taking this community through. So, tune in. For 200 years, the Brandywine Valley has been preserved due to the beneficence of great families like William Bancroft, the DuPont families, and others. We owe the legacy of this open space to them. But now we are the stewards of the preservation of this open space for this generation and the generations to come. We've been lulled into a calmness thinking that these hallowed lands would be open space forever. But the wake up call was when Woodlawn trustees transferred 1,100 acres of its land to development interests. And then all of a sudden we took action and wonderful groups like uh, the Beaver Valley Coalition, Save Our Valley, and uh, the conservation groups such as Mount Cuba came along and said, we're going to ante up not only labor, but millions of dollars. $22 million was put forward by the Mount Cuba Conservation Organization to purchase these lands from Woodlawn Trustees. And here we are at Mount Lebanon Road, where it crosses Brandywine River. Uh, here's Route 100, Thompson's Bridge, Concord Pike, Winterthur Museum and Estates, the Brandywine Creek State Park, and First State National Park. This is a map that I spearheaded with Delaware Greenways to put together our pathways and to challenge how we can fill in our missing pathways, which I'll talk about later. So uh, in the 90s, uh, there were uh, houses that were staked to be built from what was then the Doskin plant at the base of Mount Lebanon Road, north all the way to Thompson's Bridge Road. And the builders were Bennett and Boucher. They had gotten a contract uh, to purchase this land from Alzar Limited, which was the development arm of the Alfred I. DuPont Trust. Uh, the, at the time, the Woodlawn trustees were as a different board comprised of what we called quiet Quakers. They approached me at the time and said, uh, Councilman Weiner, can you help us save this land? And actually, at that time, uh, because of my legal background, I put together a, um, a uh, coalition uh, that included Woodland Trustees, the Brain and Wine Conservancy, other um, preservation groups, and uh, I drafted a petition to have the land uh, condemned and then by eminent domain taken over by the state of Delaware. Uh, I was the chairman of CCOBH, zoning chairman, and uh, a volunteer attorney for the community. And so this was a major initiative. We were able to uh, coax the developers to give up their land and sell it to Woodlawn trustees, which held the land until the uh, state of Delaware came in and added it to the Burning White Creek State Park, which at the time was only on the west side mm. of Cocker Pike. Now, later on, First State National Park was formed, again, as we mentioned before, by a, a, a one-time incredible gift of $22 million from Mount Cuba Conservation to purchase a land from Woodland Trustees. But we owe Woodland Trustees um, a, de a, a debt of gratitude because they had to purchase this land from uh, farmers like Ramsey, uh, who were about to sell to developers like Capano. And so there was incredible development pressure. So the then boards uh, of, uh, board members of the Woodland Trustees purchased this land. And so it helped to bridge the gap until we are where we are today with Brandywine Creek State Park and First State National Park. But friends and neighbors, there's plenty of land that's still threatened here on the um, uh, west side of Concord Pike 
going down to these national parks in Delaware, and that's, of course, my jurisdiction. And I've come up with a plan on how. So here's Kennet Pike, Concord Pike. Right now, I have initiated three preservation efforts which synergistically lock in together. The Red Clay Creek National Scenic Byway Protection, the Brandywine River National Scenic Byway that goes from 52 over into the Brandywine River, and then from the Brandywine River through into Concord Pike Carter, the Concord Pike Study funded by Wilmapco. All three of these together will enable us to preserve, protect, and enhance these areas to keep irresponsible overdevelopment from occurring, I'll tell you now. The objective of the Conquer Pike study is to recommend physical improvements and governmental policies regarding transportation and land use. We want to provide an environment to redevelop as high quality and attractive multimodal corridor, a provisions for future mixed use land development with walkability, bikeability, and village building at our villages of Fairfax, Tallyville, and Brandywine. To preserve, protect, and enhance Beaver Valley and the Brandywine Valley, there are several design guidelines in legislation which I am drafting and I have the support of the Land Use Department. And I'm working on support now through uh, the fellow members of council, but this will be a community-endorsed, community-implemented plan. Right now, the design guidelines that we will be looking at are building heights, setbacks, signage, dimensions, illumination, number of colors, context-sensitive pedestrian pathways, protection and preservation of scenic view sheds and utilities. Wouldn't it be nice if they were buried underground? To be consistent with the beauty and natural pristine valley that we have. Here. We're going to have a corridor management plan with a citizens advisory committee in perpetuity for both citizens in the Red Clay Valley, in the Brandywine and Beaver Valley, and along the Conquer Pike Corridor to constantly be monitoring and keeping an eye on the plans and changes that need to take place. We're now at the base of Mount Lebanon Road where the little bridge crosses the Brandywine River. Behind me is a, a readapted use of what was then doeskin plant when we were growing up. Remember, we had energy, the fast flowing Brandywine River that created water wheel energy for uh, our hydro power for all of the millers and uh, who ground uh, different wheat and other grains. We also had the doe skin plant where they had energy to take uh, the skins of animals to make things. And right across here, for those of us that remember, the doe skin plant just bridged the whole river. And this building was an adaptive reuse. And behind us, this whole field was going to be built with houses. But I fought and led the fight to keep this as open space so that it would not uh, despoil the view shed upon the Burning One River. Instead, our compromise was to push the homes further away. And remember, sometimes to do good deeds, there needs to be pragmatic compromise. Rockland Mill Village is where we're at. It was one of the earliest and longest functioning mill seats on the Brandywine. Grist milling commenced in 1724. It's replaced by a fulling and cotton mill in 1733. Paper was made here. And the reason why uh, the, um, the St. Joe Paper Company, which was the development arm of uh, the Alfred I. de Pust Contrast, was named Paper Company, is because of the historic paper which was made at this site as well. As we can see, the Brandywine River is very fast flowing for these five miles, creating the energy for water wheels. Remember, there was the original Conquer Pike, not on the edge of uh, the, the ridge of Conquer Pike, but instead, the Conquer Pike was what's called Creek Road, where the Indian Trail and Deer Path and the farmers would take the pro products to market. But those 
roads would become flooded so often that eventually a company decided to make a turnpike and uh, build a, a paying toll road, if you will, along Concord Pike. Now this original road, Creek Road, was a, not only publicly dedicated, although not paved, but it was going to be built to service houses along this road. And I'm proud to have worked with the then Woodlawn Trustees and Brandon Wine Conservancy to have led the fight to preserve Beaver Valley because if we hadn't have won the battle here, then all of this land would have changed in its character and we then all of this land along the east bank of the Brandywine River from the Doskin plant up the Thompson's Bridge would have already been set as a development site, not as a pristine open space. Houses would have been built here, then more uh, houses would have been built on the hillside going right up to Conquer Pike. That was a turning point. There were many turning points. The baton has to be panted. The law that I am now spearheading with the support of the community and with the land use department will preserve vulnerable view sheds like this along the banks of the Brandywine. This is the iconic Grenogue owned by Brip DuPont and family. Brip is now in his 90s and there's nothing, nothing that will stop this land being subdivided into five acre McMansions. Except after my 30 years of experience, I'm now proposing and seeking support from our county land use department and from the community to create a scenic and historic overlay zone over parcels like this because we can't take it for granted that it will remain open. This too, my friends, without the development protections will just be more of the same old, same old. We're looking at Smith Bridge Road with the Smith Bridge Covered Bridge rebuilt for the fourth time in 2002. It didn't need to be rebuilt. The State Department of Transportation fought us, but because of stalwart citizens uh, with the Centerville Civic Association and Brandon White Conservancy, uh, the late Pat Cannon fought to protect this. And so we now have a rebuilt bridge. I'm with my citizens, Andy Graffiti Brigade, you'll see there's graffiti on this bridge. I started this 10 years ago. We're out every weekend as volunteers really? painting over the graffiti. To the right of the Smith Bridge is Creek Road. This part is paved, but uh, the development rights of Bennett and Boucher would have had houses all along here, all the way to Mount Lebanon Road, if it hadn't been for the uh, opposition that I spearheaded uh, in the early 1990s. I'm proud that uh, we've been able to protect it. And now we have wonderful groups like Save the Valley and the Mount Cuba uh, Preservation Society and Centerville Civic Association and CCOBH and Delaware Greenways. We've all banded together to continue to protect and preserve. Our In 1991, the beautiful banks, the pristine banks of the Brandywine River, there were houses already staked to be built along this east bank of Beaver Valley. There were no houses built. The coalition that stopped houses from being built were the then Woodlawn Trustees, the Quiet Quakers, the Brandywine Conservancy, uh, the Delaware Nature Society, and myself as the zoning chairman of the Brandon 100 Civic Council. This is our legacy.